Hi everyone, so today we are doing a very exciting video. In this video, we are going to be doing something that I have been literally so obsessed. Grab every wall around me with watching. Seriously, I cannot stop watching ceramic upscaling videos. It's a problem. I needed to make one for myself. I literally can't wait. If you've not seen any of these videos, just get ready to like waste a lot of time watching these videos, but hopefully it won't be a waste and you will try this out yourself and make some really cute pieces. That's what I'm hoping to do today. So basically how these videos work is if you go to like a thrift store or a secondhand store and you can find so many vases, little glass dishes, just ceramics of so many sorts. There's like plates, vases, little things, big things, sometimes like little teddy bears or like duck ceramics. It's really overwhelming and like way too stimulating, honestly, but it's awesome. So you go to the thrift store and you get some really, really inexpensive pieces that you think have some like potential, like some potential for a nice upscale. Like it just needs some paint. It just needs a little bit of love and it could be just like a beautiful decor piece on a budget. That is what we're going to be attempting to today. I literally cannot wait. I could ramble on and on and on, but I really just want to get started. So let's head to the thrift store and see what we can pick up. Let's go. Since picking these pieces up, I have washed all of them. It's very important in general, but also at a time like this with COVID and everything, you wanna make sure to clean these off because you don't wanna catch anything from them. You just never know. Okay, there was like so many amazing pieces while I was there. It was really hard to narrow it down, but I ended up picking up six pieces. I'm gonna try to make over like three of them, which everyone's called my eyes. And then if you guys like this video, I can do the other three, but let me just show you them quickly. Okay, the first one is this little blue vase. I tried to get different heights and lengths and widths so that when they're like set out together, there's a lot of like depth and dimension to them. Also, all of these were like, like once I purchased them all, they were under $30. So really, really good budget. And here's this one. I actually like this one just as it is, but I'll do, I'll try to do it up a little bit more. This one really caught my eye. I'm not exactly sure why. It's very medieval seeming. Look at my face in there. Hello, this medieval vase. I think it's got potential to be like a nice statement piece, but honestly, I'm a little stuck on what to do with this one. Oh my goodness, again, I love this how it is. Like, I don't really think this needs a little reno, but I am going to remodel this one just a little bit to be more my style, but I just love this shape here. And also this is like a medium sized vase. And then just this glass one, this is the shortest and the widest. I really don't know what to do with this. I feel like it would be nice like hanging in some sort of macrame thing. And then this glass funky one. This one is like exactly what I was searching for. It's like a little bit off kilt there. Very cute. Okay, the last and final like ceramic glass piece that I got was this one. It's very, very thin. I was thinking this would look beautiful with like a few tulips in here. I just bought some tulips. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw, but I feel like they would look so nice displayed in here. So I'm like really excited. I think I'm gonna go downstairs and brainstorm some ideas of what I wanna do with these pieces and then we'll get into the DIY portion. Okay, so I have all of the pieces that I picked up just laying out. I just want to take a second and go on Pinterest and try and find some like visual inspo. I'm like a really visual learner, so I like to search around. I also got an iPad and I'm actually obsessed with this iPad. I will not stop talking about it, but I just really like it. Like I've been able to lay out so many things that I'm doing in here and just really be able to keep things organized. So I went ahead and I took a picture of each piece ceramic that we picked up and now I'm probably gonna pick three to upscale but I don't know which three yet so we'll see. Pastel ceramic is kind of like a key search for me. I want all of these to be very light and airy. I feel like such a professional right now like I don't know why like I'm just upscaling ceramics. See like this picture? So Cute, I love that. Like if we could turn this into that, that would be great. It's a uh, voiceover Mia here. I thought I would just pop in just to tell you like, 
the planning I was going to do. I wanted to be super professional, so I went into Notability and I wanted to sketch out what I was doing so that I was really prepared. Honestly, did these help? Maybe a little bit, honestly. And it made me feel professional and it was kind of fun. But I will admit this one looks a little bit more lame once it's finished because I was just going to paint it yellow, but it was still fun to draw it out. Okay, so here I'm just mixing up a pastel yellow, and the fun thing is I'm going to be adding baking powder. Now, I've seen this on YouTube a lot, and this is what's going to give you that chalky, bumpy, textured look, like it's real pottery. I put way too much baking powder, but I made it work. Honestly, use way less than this if you're trying this. <laughs> I have never been the type to be able to keep my station clean. Like, I try. I really do. But it's just impossible for me. Off camera, I actually painted each piece with like an adhering paint that was gonna make it super grippy. So after that, I just painted on the first layer of yellow and then I decided I didn't like that yellow, so I did a little bit of a darker yellow and I still don't know which one I liked more or if it was a bad idea to paint over it. But yeah. Okay, this piece was actually hard to paint over because I really like the yellow with the stripes, but I decided to get inspired by strawberry milk and paint it this really pretty light pink color and then paint these cute little like animated strawberries all over it. I think it was cute. It definitely changed the vibe a lot. Okay, this last one, oh my gosh. I don't even know, I saw this picture on Etsy and I just fell in love with the idea of painting this like a sloth. So that's what I did. Also for the brown color, I added baking powder so it would sort of look like fluffy fur with a little bit of texture. Yeah, this one was actually really, really fun to paint. But again, you can be the judge if it turned out well. <laughs> It's one of those things that when I look at it, it makes me happy, but I don't know how good it honestly is. <laughs> oh my gosh, does this look good? I can't tell. You guys, I feel like this is always what happens when I do DIYs. Like, I feel like my channel, I used to make lots of DIYs, but then I was just like realizing, am I the worst at DIYs? Like, are the pieces better before I do anything to them? And I'm kind of having that moment right now because I'm like, are those good? Like, um, like, what did I do? They definitely don't look right together, but like, I made a sloth. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I feel very confident about this revamp, you guys. I had like really high hopes and like, and I just don't know. Tell me down below, do you like these? Okay, let me look at them with like a more positive eye. I mean, I like the sloth one for sure. And the strawberry one I think has the most potential. This one's cool because it is like textured and chalky, but I just don't know. I'm not sure, but okay, I want to see this through. So I got this UV resistant matte clear acrylic coating and I also got the same thing but glossy. So I'm going to spray these two with gloss and then this one with matte because it's gig is kind of like it's chalky. So I'm going to go outside and do that. <laughs> and I'm going to stage them up and see how they look. Hopefully they look good. I don't know. All right, you guys, the vases are completely dry now. The gloss and the matte finishing spray, I feel like did finish them off really well. And I think they'll help for like chipping and things like that. I don't know 
how to feel about them. I mean, I like them, but I feel like when I initially started this, I was like, I'm gonna make some like high fashion vases and then I made a sloth, so take that however you want. I feel a little bit better about them now because my dad came in and he saw them and he was like, oh my gosh, I love them. They're amazing. So that boosted my confidence a little bit, but you guys can be the judge. I will show you them one at a time. I have them staged up. I think it really helps to stage the pieces. It makes me usually like them a little bit more. So we'll start with the sloth. All right, here we are with the sloth. Now, let us not forget where we started with this basic glass vase. I'll post a picture right now. This is what we started at. This is actually what my mom came up with for staging. She stuck all of these in here, so we can't hate on it because she did it. Pressure. I'm just not sure if he's like good. Uh, I think he's adorable. I'll take him. And honestly, I really like it. It's really cute. It looks like the sloth has like some crazy hair. We also made this like macrame holder and I feel like like that turned out really good. I feel like I'm talking about the faux plant and the macrame holder though, whereas like I should be talking about the piece. Is it an upscale? Is it a uh, revamp? Sure. It definitely looks handmade, if that makes sense, which isn't always a bad thing, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm so not confident about this DIY, but like, it's cute. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. I like it. Okay, here now with the staging of this strawberry vase. Again, I wish I could be more confident about these. I just don't know. Like, is that good? I just don't want to make it like childish, but I painted strawberries on a pink vase, so I'm unsure. Kind of unrelated to the vase, but I love this. I think it's called like palm, pompous? Pompa grass? I'm not sure, but it's so fluffy and soft and just really cute. I like the way that that looks. And I think this whole like stage situation looks really cute. So I don't want to be too harsh on my DIYs. So here's the second one. Makes me crave strawberry milk. Okay, and finally we have this yellow vase. Now the exciting part about this one is the texture. Because of the baking powder, it's like all almost clay looking. It's really, really bumpy. Wait. You can kind of hear the texture. I also staged this one up with tulips because I am literally obsessed with tulips right now. I seriously can't stop. Like they are so beautiful. These ones are a little bit old, but they're very, very cute. And I feel like they like work well together with the red and yellow and the green. I really like how this one went. I liked it glass too though. Like that's the problem. So I like it both ways, but I was really, really excited to try the baking powder like texture vase thing. And I think it worked out well. All right, you guys. So that was all three of the ceramic vase revamp video. Um, let me know down below how this went. Please tell me this wasn't a waste of time. Um, I need your assurance now. I mean, I'm really happy with how the vases turned out, honestly. I think they're really unique. I think the one thing that I missed was I kind of wanted all the vases to look good together, but after doing them, I realized they all have a very separate vibe and didn't really mesh well together, but that's okay. I just staged them individually, and I feel like that worked better. I had a lot of fun doing this video, and if you guys had fun watching, I can definitely do the next three vases revamp in a part two to this video. I feel like I'm using my hands a lot, but that's not new. But anyways, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!